Hello, hello everyone. How's it going? It's me, Jaylene, also known as fem 4 I have a very fun topic to talk about with you all today, but first, did you subscribe to the Sexy Sex Ed? Cool. Let's crack open the topic of cuckolding, my friends. I'm going to be covering four things for you today. Number one, what is cuckolding? Number two, cuckolding versus hot wife scene. Number three, why do people like cuckolding? And number four, three key tips for beginner cucks. Also, if you're wanting to learn just a little bit more about male, male, female thesis, just click the link above here. Number one, what is cuckolding? Cuckolding is a power play act from the beautiful realm of, you guessed it, BDSM baby, involving three people or more. Oh, a girl can dream. Cuckolding is when one person, the cuck, i.e. the submissive, experiences the relationship partner, i.e. the dom, having sexual activities with the third person, who is generally called the bull. The term bull is generally used for a male who is having sex with the cuck's partner, but in this video, the term bull means the guest of honor in any gender. As even though cuckolding is primarily a masculine dominated fantasy, us femmes can definitely have that fantasy and experience as well. Even if there is no particular term for a female body bull. Cucking, I like to say, is basically on a huge spectrum of how you want to experience it. It can range from you being right there right beside the bed watching your partner have sex with another human or you can literally just witness them walking out the door going off to do their sexy adventure. This all sounds kind of familiar in terms of the hot wife scene. Thus, we're going to number two, hot wife scene versus cuckolding. Cuckolding is different than the hot wife scene in terms of the cuck is seen as not good enough for the romantic partner. Sometimes the cuck will be compared to the bull in terms of their worthiness and their sexual performance. Hot wife, on the other hand, is simply the engagement of voyeurism and exhibitionism. In hot wife, you love watching your partner receive pleasure, but there is no power play involved in terms of your worthiness or comparing yourself to the extra hands and genitals that you two added to the bedroom. While with the cuck, on the other hand, they are experiencing their partner getting frisky with someone else with the acknowledgement that they are less than the guest. Which brings me to number three. Why do people like it? Cuckolding, though a very physical act, has a lot more to do with psychological fuckery. It just sounds snazzy. Like you saw the difference between the hot wife and the cuckolding, the cuck actually really likes to enjoy a little bit of masochism with the acknowledgement of seeing their partner go off to someone else knowing that they're not good enough. Some other examples of mindsets that turn a cuck on, they're not worthy of sexual pleasure, they're not worthy of their partner, and this is a big one for those who have penises, they are not big enough or well endowed in that area. For all those masochist subs who like being beaten and don't really understand cuckolding, psychological and physical pain actually activate the exact same areas of your brain. So, cucks do like to be hurt, but their egos are the punching bags. Pow, pow. All right, last but not least, number four, three tips for beginner cucks. Tip number one, for the masculine cucks. Sometimes I have come across clients who come to me in terms of feeling shame over their cuckolding fantasies, as it does go against the very suffocating stereotype of what it means to be a man. But here's some flash news for you. Even though in the act itself, the cuck is seen as the weakling, as they are in the submissive role, the cuck actually holds all the power in the scene itself. As, just like in any power play, the sub is the one who has the safe words, who is able to stop the scene at any time they want. And if that's not a powerful authority, I really don't know what is. Tip number two, have a fucking safe word. This obviously, like I say, is for any type of BDSM play, but I did want to reiterate it here because a lot of times we can forget the amount that psychological pain can take hold on us and do damage to us if it is taken too far. Because there will be no physical cues for your dom to notice when exactly you are reaching your breaking point, you won't be able to see any bruises or anything, you will need to give them a visual cue. This can be verbal or non-verbal. For best practice, I do say that both the dom and the bull both know the safe word. And if you're feeling a little bit shy about having the bull know when you're reaching your breaking point, when you say your safe word, you and your dom can devise a safe word beforehand a little bit more secretive one and when you do signal it to them the dom will know to take action to stop the scene with the bull last but not least tip number three 
swim in shallow waters. We all love the scenarios and fantasies that play in our head, but real life is different, my cuckies. Real feelings of jealousy may arise, even if you feel like you don't expect it, and that can really put a whole dampening on the experience. So swim in the depths of deprivation and degradation slowly. Some examples of this. Have your partner role play with you that they just went out and bonked a beautiful human. Have your partner have sex with the bull in the next room. Or have your partner have sex with the bull, film it, and have you both watch it together upon their return, or they send you the video itself. All right, now time to share your own cucking experiences and tips down below in the comments, while also hitting that like and subscribe button if you learned something new today. Also, be sure to contact me for a one-on-one -on -one coaching call if you wanted to explore more of the sex that you desire. My contact and website is right below. All right, I won't cuck any more of your time. Thanks so much for watching, everyone. It is me, Ben Ford. Mwah.